G'day guys, JBC here for JBC Reviews and thank you for tuning in once again. Okay, I'm excited. Now, um, so much so I'm going to do my dance of joy. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Okay, why am I excited? Um, because I've got a model here that hasn't been done before, um, especially not in this size, sorry, not in this size in EPO, it hasn't been done before, okay? And it is the, oh, there we go right there, it's the De Havilland Mosquito, made by these guys right here, HC Hobby. Now, okay, they opened all B25 by the way, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, good news, this is available from Hobby King, these guys right here, see, Hobby King? Anyway, um, but, so what's not, that's not that surprising, but, what is good is they're carrying in all four of the warehouses. So China, USA, Germany, and Australia are all carrying this model at a pretty good price. Now, enough of me talking, or not talking crap, but enough of me talking and telling you how good I think this is and my first impressions. Let's move the camera up close so you guys can get a look at the foam and the electronics and all the gizmos and whatnot that you get with it, and then that way you can make up your own mind, okay? So I just thought I'd show you quickly how it actually comes packaged because some of you guys always like to see that. So you get one wing obviously in its plastic. Underneath is the next one. Okay, and there is your fuselage all packed away in there. Okay, one piece. That's where your wing goes in. That little thing in there kind of comes off. Servos, etc. And your tail wheel. And in here, you have four propellers, okay, spares, counter-rotating instructions there. That's where they put your stabs, your stabilizers, your canopy, okay, engine cows, motors, two of them, and your spa electronics and spinners. But I'll take them all out of their plastic wrapping so you guys can have a close look and we can see all the detail and all the whatever you get with it exactly. Well here it is all laid out so you guys can get a much closer look. It's everything you get in the kit. In the kit with the retracts I should say. Now quickly looking through the instructions. Um, it's not the greatest but it's not the worst either. It's just got everything that you need kind of in there. Pictures, words, etc. What you need to assemble the model. Right. Okay, but it's not going to be a difficult build, so you probably won't even use it. Anyway, now what can I tell you? First up, the quality of the foam, very dense. It feels quite good, okay? Um, some EPOs, not so good. This one feels quite good. The paintwork, excellent. It's not, you know, I've rubbed it a lot in lots of different spots on edges and stuff where it normally would come off. It doesn't come off, so the paintwork is good. Um, the, it's got actual hinges. It doesn't rely on foam hinges. Another nice little touch. It comes with the horns already screwed on so you don't have to do it, which is always good. I mean, little things like that, you know, save you a bit of time when you're building and stuff. I like it. Now, the decals, I don't know if it's really hard to tell whether or not they're painted or they're water decals. My gut feeling is they're water decals. Um, they seem to be pretty good quality. Um, the props there, they look nice and scaled. Um, feedback on the thread is they're not the greatest in terms of providing, um, how can I say, good speed. Um, it's not a very high pitch, it's, it's looking to be around the 5 mark, so they're 10, 10 by 5 from you know, by 3 from memory. Um, now this is what I like, now the engine cows, now they're very, they're hard plastic, but the level of detail on them is quite high. Um, you'll be impressed when you get yours and take it out of the box. I like it, it looks really good. It's a nice little touch, you know, it doesn't look like a cheap. If you look at, say, the GWS, uh, for example, to compare, um, cows, they're just cheap in plastic, they break really easy. Um, these are not, they're hard, tough plastic, they're not gonna break, and the detail is good. Um, there's your spa, um, I'm not sure, I don't think it's carbon fiber, but whatever it is, it's probably fiberglass, it's very, very, very hard. Um, these two little plastic, I don't know what they are, they came in the packet with the spa, I have no idea what they are yet, I'm probably going to find out when I build it. Um, the motors are the classic DT style. Now, the good thing is I've tested these, on the, I've chucked them on the KV meter, because they didn't have a rating on the website, so I don't know what they were, so I chucked them on the KV meter. Um, someone mentioned they were 930 KV. And then I tested them, and one was 926, and one was 928. So pretty good, um, nice and close. Uh, moving along to the fuselage. Okay, again, still tough foam. The decals on there, very good. Paint finish is good. Tail wheel, nice and sprung. Tail wheel there, probably a little out of scale, but um, with foam, 
with the foam wheel on there. Um, you can, your rods, your push rods are a decent thickness. You know, they're not thin, they're not gonna flex too much, which is good. So you got dual control, dual elevator rods there, and one for your rudder, and obviously that one there for your tail wheel. Controlled by two servos here, um, one being your uh, elevator, of course, and one being your rudder. Now, on some ply, um, I'm probably gonna swap out, they look to be, I can't tell you, but they look to be nine gram servos. I'm actually, it's just a personal thing. I'm gonna swap out the elevator for a servo for something a little bit bigger. Um, it's just, just me, I think a nine gram servo pushing two push rods on an elevator that's that big is probably not a good idea, but that's just, I mean, that's just my, my opinion. There haven't been any reports of the elevator servo going. Okay, so it's just, again, that's just a thing that I want to do myself. Um, I'll also be installing a separate back on this. Um, that's another personal thing. It's any model that I get that's over a kilo in weight or 4S and above, even though this is gonna be running 3S, I like to run a separate back. So not everyone has to do it, not everyone does do it, but I do it. And I'll show you later on actually how I do that. Now that's where your canopy goes. Heaps of room inside, as you can see, to fit a decent battery. There's a little, I don't know if you can see it, in there. I'll try and get the camera in there. Um, that black round thing, that's actually a weight in there. Um, now guys are reporting to take them out because it's not necess it's not necessary. I'll let you know when I fly mine if, um, if it is or not, or if I used it or not. This comes off for some more airflow to get to your electronics and whatnot. Um, another nice little touch, it comes with nav lights. Pretty cool, huh? I thought that was cool, any funky. Um, canopy, uh, there you go, nice. It's not overly scale, but it's got a nice little dashboard decal in there, which is a nice little touch electronics. Um, it comes with a XT60 connector. Um, all soldered up, ready to go, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's 16 gauge wire. I might disconnect, this is a personal thing, I might disconnect it there and chuck something slightly heavier through there, like 14 gauge, don't know yet. No reports of it being um, not satisfactory, I think it's just something I wanna do. Now the glue, I'll tell this to anyone who gets glue um, in their box and looks at you. The first thing I always do is when I open up a box is I look for the glue and then I take it out and I do a test on some foam I always keep, you know, if you've got some EPO lying around or EPS, like an old crash model or whatever, just keep a wing or keep a piece, um, test it out, and then the next day you can see whether or not it's useful. Now, I've used this on EPO, and it didn't really glue very well, so I'm not going to use it. I've got heaps of glue that I got from Hobby King, which I'm going to use anyway. <clears throat> now, there's your spinners. Um, again, nice, nice colour, paintwork, uh, quality looks pretty good. Um, and the guns these are the cool little guns that it comes with in the notes comes with a screwdriver allen wrench and screws and a few yes yeah, best screws washers and got quite some nuts and stuff in there um, moving along to the wing uh, now from what I can see I think when they cast this wing it's probably got a spar through the middle in the casting you can't see it from outside at all but I reckon it does have one in there because it's very very stiff you're not gonna get any wing flex at all um, and that's where your mount, motor mounts to. Um, now underneath the servo, of course, there, wires running all the way to the nav lights. Um, now inside here, or I should say there, is where your ESC is. Great little design here, because you can see plenty, gonna, they're gonna get plenty of airflow, okay? That's always really good and important for ESCs. They're 30 amp ESCs. Uh, apparently they're capable of 4S, however the motors uh, back over here um, I haven't been able to find out anywhere whether or not they're capable of 4S. Some guys are running them on 4S just watch your amp rating um, I'm not recommending it, I'm going to run my 3S but uh, there have been quite a few guys that are running 4S just watch your amp draw, try and keep it around the 20 mark, 25 tops um, another good thing I liked in here, the retracts um, there's heaps of room in here now these are mechanical you know I've got I've got I've used mechanical and I've got electric um, retracts the thing is if anything does ever happen to your retracts there's heaps of room in there if you ever want to rip them out and put uh, some electrics in there and you can easily run the wires down there and through there out to your fuse so okay I hope that covers pretty or much everything that you guys are gonna get in your box um, and the plane 
So now it's time to actually put this thing together and see how nice it actually does go together. Okay, quick builder steps guys. All right, here we go. I've just, I've changed out the elevator servo and put this one here. It's a 13 or a 14 gram metal gear. I'll post the link to the exact one that I used in the blog. Reason being, um, I'm a believer in if you lose aileron, um, you've still got rudder for turning control or rudder you've got aileron control, but if you lose your elevator, your plane is gonna crash. So you wanna, not that there's anything wrong with the stock servo, but I ran a slightly bigger and heavier uh, 13 or 14 gram, I can't remember, yeah, metal gear servo, because um, you are pushing two uh, push rods on, and on a third this size, I think, I just thought, personally, I just think the 9 gram was slightly on the small side, but that's, you know, it's just a personal thing. Next thing, the spinners, as you can see, the, the one on the right is the master air screw prop, and the one on the left is the stock one. I trembled out a little bit here to fit it, because I, well, that's what I had to do. Otherwise, it was not going to fit. Um, you'll see later on in the fly video. I will test it. I will fly it with the stock prop, and then I'll fly it with a master air screw prop. Um, undecided if I'm going to go 10 by 7 or 9 by 7 just yet. So you'll see the differences, and you can make up your own mind which one you sort of or which one you prefer. Um, speed controller. The ESC here. What I like to do. Okay, first of all, there you go. You can see the specs on it right there. So it's suitable for a 2 to 4 S LiPo 30 amp. Um, now, I like to cut away some of the heat shrink and expose the heat sink on one side. It lets it run cooler. Not that this thing, I mean, it's getting heaps of airflow through there. So, um, yeah, it's not really going to get hot, but it's just something I like to do. Helps keep your SE cooler, last longer, etc. Now, get yourself a toothpick like so. And where your joins are going to be um, for the fuse and the wing, just put lots of holes like that and rough it up a little bit. Okay, like as you can see, like I've done there, and also in the fuse. Now what that does, that allows the epoxy to seep in there and basically bite into the foam and it will give you a better joint, a better glue joint and make it nice and strong. Here is the nose weight that comes with the model, um, okay, to give you an idea, it's I weighed it, it's about 60 grams or 2 ounces and that was the weight that was in, in the front there. Okay, I've taken it out because I'm going to be running. I'd rather have the extra weight in the batteries. If you're on smaller batteries, I guess, you know, leave it in there. It's a, it's a personal thing. Now, a uh, little tip. With the E, if you, I'm running a separate back. There it is there. Now, a separate back is going to supply power to my receiver by there. See so your positive and negative wire. Therefore, what you need to do is remove the positive wire that comes off of your ESC. So there's your plug. There's you know, the red wire that's been taken out. Now, rather than cut it, just pull it out. Bend it over, put a little bit of heat shrink over the top, and um, obviously heat it up and shrink it back. That way, if you ever need it in future, you can just cut the heat shrink off, put it back in there, and you're good to go. You don't have to solder a new connection on there or anything. And one other mod that I've done, okay, as you can see, I've wired in a separate PEC, but while I had, while I was doing some soldering, I decided to change the gauge of the wire on the peak where it splits into two it goes into two ECs. Just that little bit between the XC60 connector and where it splits is now um, a 12 gauge uh, wire instead of this which is 16, the original. And what a, that's how you can see I've wired up the separate PEC. Just tap in at the connector there, positive and the negative. So that's got constant uh, power from your battery and then obviously to your receiver.